No, they're probably just running late. They'll be here, babe. Okay, son. Say bye to your mom. Give me a kiss. Bye, mom. Oh, I love you. Call me. Okay. Anytime. Love you. Love you. Bye. Bye. financial consultant recently divorced did, did you notice the way he ate his pancakes Helen he took his time on every bite <laughs> Get a grip. you know what they say about tall lanky men don't you they have enormous feet <laughs> I happen to know he's going to the theater today, a matinee. I think I'll take the harbor tour. Dear Catherine, I'm sorry I haven't talked to you in so long. I feel I've been lost. No bearings, no compass. I kept crashing into things, a little crazy, I guess. I've never been lost before. You were my true north. I could always steer for home when you were my home. Forgive me for being so angry when you left. I still think some mistake's been made, and I'm waiting for God to take it back. But I'm doing better now. The work helps me. Most of all, you help me. You came into my dream last night with that smile of yours that always held me like a lover, rocked me like a child. All I remember from the dream is a feeling of peace. I woke up with that feeling 
and tried to keep it alive as long as I could. I'm writing to tell you that I'm on a journey toward that peace and to tell you I'm sorry about so many things. I'm sorry I didn't take better care of you so that you never spent one minute being cold or scared or sick. I'm sorry I didn't try harder to find the words to tell you what I was feeling. I'm sorry I never fixed the screen door. I fixed it now. I'm sorry I ever fought with you. I'm sorry I didn't apologize more. I was too proud. I'm sorry I didn't bring you more compliments on everything you wore and every way you fixed your hair. I'm sorry I didn't hold on to you with so much strength that even God couldn't pull you away. Signed, all my love, G. That is so sad. God. It's not that, it's just it's so honest. I mean, this could be like hundreds of years old. It's tight, Alva. <laughs> Pretty good. Pretty good means you wish you had written it. I'd have emailed her, probably. Anyway, I know what you wish. You wish it had been addressed, dear Teresa. <laughs> oh, well, come on now, Charlie. Any girl would want to be loved like that. Well, I mean, to be somebody's true north? Are you kidding? It's... Lonely women, particularly? Oh, is that how you see me? Did you talk to anybody in your trip? Tell any jokes? I had a good time. Really? Mm -hmm. Came back a day early. Oh, I happen to like my job. You're in denial. You should be writing. Oh. You better hope I stick to research, Charlie. I don't think you could do your column without me. Did you ever notice, Teresa, that most people around here refer to me as Mr. Toski, out of respect? Mm, yeah, well, I knew you before your teeth were capped. I knew you when your step was swift and your heart was high. Al Giddens, Lakefront Winter, Harcourt Grace, 1948. Thought I made that up. Sorry. I just was expecting him to call. No, I'm not worried. I just miss him. I know. <laughs> what? No, I just got it. Why? What? Oh, my God. I can't believe he did this. I can't believe it. What the hell are you so annoyed about? Because it's wrong to print it. It's wrong. It's private. It's somebody's intimate Excuse me. thoughts. Teresa, Teresa, it's not your letter. Yeah, I know it's not my letter. Right. I found it. Is this getting personal? Is that why you're so pissed off? Mm -hmm. I'm not pissed off. I'm just a little pissed off. Oh. This. Look, there are letters to the paper about the message in the bottle. Look at them. What? Uh huh. And two more boxes. Okay, take those to research. I found them in the mailroom. Nice ass. Okay, Charlie wants us to drop everything else. And do what? Answer all of them? Oh, no, no, no. We're going to go through them. We're going to count up the pros and cons. We're going to get rid of all the nuts, all the letters. And then we're going to do some excerpts because the paper wants us to milk it. This is big. This is bigger than the low fat muffin scandal, bigger than the mayor and the school teacher. It's amazing. Your column sucks, the big no. one. No. Yes. 
Negative, Listen, think. if only more men would have the sensitivity and the guts to talk about how they feel instead of dot, 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 hiding behind a remote-controlled TV and so sports too. It. My niece sent it to me last year, and I think it might be a message from the same person, so I'm enclosing it here. What? What? Dear Catherine. No, are you kidding? Really? Out loud, read it out loud. Dear Catherine, there isn't an hour of my life without you in it. I mend the boats, test them, and all the while the memories come in like the tide. I was thinking today of when we were young and you left our world for a bigger world. I was a lot more scared than I would admit. I fought my fear by telling myself you'd come back someday and trying to think of the first thing I'd say to you when I saw you again. I must have tried out a hundred possibilities. What did I finally say? Not much. My mouth wouldn't work except to kiss you. And when you said I'm here to stay, that said it all. Well, I'm doing it again. Wow, I keep imagining what I'd say to you if somehow you came back. Bob, hey, it's Teresa at the Tribune. Right, I know, it's been a while. Listen, I've got something for you. It's two traces. A sheet of stationery has an imprint on it. Also, where do I go for a typewriter trace? The uh, typewriter that you're looking for is an Olympic Hertzvogel 980. Hmm, German and old. Now, is this a typewriter that would have been sold commercially in the States in the last 30 years? Oh, well, it's been rekeyed. People who like manuals, they buy these reconditioned. So this letter was probably typed within the last five years. So he's out there, and he could be young. Teresa, you're gonna like this. What? Remember that report you asked me to do? Cork came back. It has been in the water approximately two years. That's it? Two years? Two years. Oh, thank you. Ah, don't look at me, buddy. Aqua glass, 89, looks like an A. But I'm sending you Polaroids. Yeah, you you like the baby then, Teresa? <laughs> Don't Teresa. go. You're always so busy. I never get a chance to talk to hang you. Uh huh. Hang up, Jace. Hang on one second. What? Remember the letter that mentions the message from a bottle on the restaurant wall in Virginia? Okay. The stationery, the logo, and the typewriter. It's all there. Hang up and hit no. line five. Yeah, she's she's waiting to speak to you. I never get to talk to him. Call him back, Jace. Uh, you know, can she fax? Fax it. It's, it's like Virginia. You know, Ellie's house of crabs. How the hell do I know if she's got a fax machine? Have her fax. Fine. Hi. Right. No, tell me about Bunker Hill. Oh. To all the ships at sea and all the ports of call, to my family and to all friends and strangers. No, dear Catherine? No, not this time, but the stationery and the typewriter check out. We think maybe this is the first one or the final one, right? Mm -hmm. Right. This is a message and a prayer. The message is that my travels taught me a great truth. I already had what everyone is searching for and few ever find. The one person in the world who I was born to love forever. A person like me, of the Outer Banks and the Blue Atlantic Mystery. The Outer Banks, that's North Carolina. Right. But it's um, about a dozen towns, but only four that can support a boat building and boat restoring company. Well, then we got him. We've got, uh, we got Stringers there, we got a sister paper in Wilmington. Yeah, I bet we find this guy before the week's up. Any bets, girls? What? I want to go. She wants to do it, Charlie. So, you find this guy, then what? Well, I don't know. I'm not sure, but I want to go. Can't spare you. Need you here. Charlie, you're the one that sent me to India for the column on smokestacks. You sent her to Texas for three days, talking to Marines. Yes, that was entirely different. Why do you have to do this personally? What do you mean personally? I just, I'm intrigued, so what? Intrigued? So what if this guy is covered in tattoos and has four serious convictions? Tell her, will you tell her? <clears throat> I'm only afraid that your expectations are too high. I don't have any. 
This is research. You're thinking Heathcliff. You're thinking Hamlet. And this guy is probably Captain Ahab. Are you saying that I can't go? Oh. It's called a risk, Charlie, right? Something you've been telling me for two years. Take a risk. Remember when you asked me to call all the uh, stationery stores in the Outer Banks area? Right. Oh, God, I've got other names for you. Hang on one second. Well, I got it. What? You got what? I called this one in Moorhead City, and they said that they remembered the little sailboat logo, and they said it was designed by the customers. It's them. Don't tell Charlie. He'll try and make you do this over the phone. You got him, Teresa. Now go knock on his door. Help you? Uh, sorry, I just admire these older homes. You in real estate? No. Um, I was wondering if I could take a photograph of the house for a publication. Jehovah's Witness? <laughs> no. Photograph? Well, I never thought of that. Can't say yes or no. And why is that? It's my son's place. I live back down that way. So you're going to have to ask him. He'll be kicking around to Harvard. Garrett, Blake. Never wears a hat. Great. Thank you. Is it Playboy? <laughs> I always admired your covers. Never bought the magazine, though. <laughs> well, there's always tomorrow. Hi. Oh. Hi. Great day, isn't it? Yeah, it's a beauty. I wish I could be out on the water today. Yeah, I bet. It's a great boat. Are you restoring this boat? Yeah, doing the best that I can. Um, do you restore boats for a living because... No, I'm just a weekend warrior. I mean, you, uh, you get a boat that needs some work done. Well, actually, um... I got a man here in town, uh, got a shop. Garrett! He's working on the wooden schooner down here, 40-footer. Oh, sweet lines on that boat. Yeah? Oh, yeah, you can't beat the old woods. Great, thank you. Hey, you bet. You have a nice day. You too. I love the, uh, 
the older the wooden boats. It's, it must be a, a 40 footer, a schooner, right? Alden schooner. 1922, Adam, May. Is she yours? Nope. Just putting her back in shape. Sweet lines. You want to step aboard? Yeah. There's some wet spots. She's a beauty. Was she in bad shape? Neglected. Unappreciated. <laughs> I know how she feels. I doubt it. <laughs> you a tourist? I'm just getting acquainted with the place, the people. I'm Teresa Osborne. Garrett Blake. You sound like up north. Do I? Yep. Chicago. I'm in research. For what? Well, just about everything. We're, uh, for a newspaper. You know, is there anywhere I can do some sailing while I'm here? Guess you could probably rent a boat on the other side. Oh, no. I mean, I'm not experienced at all. Um, but I'd like to be. I just, uh, I'm from the prairie state, so. <laughs> <laughs> Dodo in the water. Sorry to have interrupted your work. I'm gonna, thank you. I'm taking her out tomorrow morning. Test sailed. Around the point and back. Just about an hour. Do you want to come along? Uh, yeah. That'd be nice. About seven? Great. You Great. come earlier, I'll be in that diner over there. Earlier than seven? <laughs> Great. I'll see you here. Or at the... have the same people in here every day. All the tourists go to the Pancake Palace. <laughs> Let them. <laughs> and what do you got? The same fisherman, a would-be carpenter, and a nearsighted mechanic, and a thief who wants to be a shipwright. All right, now don't start any shit. Well, thief is somebody who keeps property and belongs to somebody else, am I right? Well, you ain't right if the courts say you ain't right, right? <clears throat> right. Loudmouth asshole. What'd you say? I didn't know I was talking to you, Johnny. <laughs> <laughs> All right, no, no, I'm calling Pete right now. No, you two bust up this place again, and charges will be pressed, That's arrests right. will be made, and I ain't bluffing. Man, a thief deserves to be in jail. I never took a damn thing from you or anybody in this town. I say different. And you're a liar, Johnny. Don't you ever! Come on, 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 now leave it alone. Just walk away from one. Yes, he ain't worth it. Come on, go on. Go on. Let me see what he did. Come on. Come down, John. Go ahead, Garrett. He ain't worth it. It's all holding.
Thought you wouldn't come. Uh, well, actually, I came to say that I'm not coming. But I, I didn't want to not show because I just hate people like that, so... I'm sorry you saw that. Does that happen a lot around here? I mean, instead of bowling or... All right, well, maybe I'll see you around. I'm still gonna run her out for a test. Just a short sale. I don't know, you know, what if you got mad at me? <laughs> it's a small boat. I don't like fighting, Teresa. Bowling, either. <laughs> well, before you go, would you untie that, toss it in? Appreciate it. Did I just jump over? I'm sorry, I used to be better with people. Oh, so you used to be charming. Sorry, I missed that. Research? Well, no, actually, it's called conversation. <laughs> I might be able to help you. I have a degree. So what, you stole his girlfriend in the eighth grade? No. I married his sister. So your turn, right? OK. Still married? No. You? No. I have a son. A great son. Date much? No. You? <laughs> You're starting to get the hang of this fight. <laughs> Watch your head with the boom. small for you. What? The jacket. What jacket? Oh. It's hers. Whose? Woman from today. She left it on board. Well, did you tell her? 
Did you call her? No. I thought maybe you'd drop it off for me in town at the hotel. I'm not gonna drop off the jacket. Take her the jacket. But you don't want to see her again. Maybe. So? So, Dad, it's not an easy thing, yeah? What? You be her. I'll be you. Here's your jacket. Jackets like that don't come along every week, you know. One second. Hi. You forgot this. Oh, thank you. That, um, I stayed in. I didn't even notice. Thanks. Um, you want to come in? Yeah. Nice place. Uh, it's Victorian, 1911. Made into an inn in 1944. But you probably knew all that stuff. I've never been in here. Oh, well. Why would you be in here? <laughs> You're from here. <laughs> this is your hometown. <laughs> I had a really good time today. And the boat did well. We didn't have to bail <laughs> or anything. <laughs> no. Thanks for bringing the jacket. You're welcome. I know that I just said thank you about eight times because I have no idea what to say. <laughs> and I'm wondering why you're here because you don't know what to say either. I'm wondering that too. You eat meat? You eat red meat? Sometimes. I make a perfect steak. It's the best thing I do. <laughs> <laughs> You're bragging. I know. <laughs> but it's true. Well, that's very interesting. Thanks for telling me. I'd like to make you one. Tomorrow night. You would? You know, on the boat today, I had a good time too. Uh, what time? Six. Okay. It's uh, 18 Foster Lane. I know. You do? I know it's got to be on the water, right? Right. Everything's on the water. Night. See ya. Found it. Yeah. <laughs> Come in. I didn't realize you were so close. You walked. I hope you like bread. I do. I already have one open. Wow. You need some help? No. Just make yourself welcome. Okay. Can I pour you a glass? Yeah. What a great house. The light in here. Oh, 
I love this boat painting. It's incredible. You can hear it almost, the wind. Is it a local artist? So my wife, Catherine. She died two years ago. I'm sorry. Do you paint also? <laughs> no. My dad died when I was in college. I remember my mom kept one of his shirts on the back of a chair in my parents' bedroom. And she probably left it there for... Maybe it's still there, I don't know. Look, I was nervous, so I drank too much wine, so. <laughs> But, listen, there's something that I should tell you. Look, I was nervous, too. I just, um... What? I didn't... I don't do this. <laughs> oh, thank God, I don't do this either. I mean, I'm... I'm not good at this. <laughs> well, for two people that don't do it, we do it pretty well. <laughs> Does it feel cold enough for a fire? Yeah. I thought we were still in love. But maybe I didn't even think about it. Because I had my son, my work, my husband. I was on my way to becoming a writer. And David and I were even talking about having a second child. Can you believe that? And one day I was just driving along. And I saw them. David and this woman walking into the park. And it was just a glimpse. It was a second. And I knew. And I just sat there in my car. I didn't even shut off the engine. I just sat for an hour and a half. And <laughs> so you're faced with the impossible and it takes an hour and a half. It was going on almost a year. I can't believe I just told you all that. I mean, this stuff happens to everybody, right? But it happened to you, Teresa. And I'm sorry. That kind of stuff happened in St. Clair? Oh, yeah. Everything happens in St. Clair. Eventually.
Tell me about Catherine. Well, um, we grew up together. She was kind of, um, People were, they were drawn to her I mean, by her smile, her enthusiasm. She, um, she could brighten up a whole room, a whole town. I, uh, I called her um, St. Catherine. How did she die? She was ill, fragile. Sorry. It's all right. It's okay. Have you lived here your whole life? Not yet. <laughs> God, this place used to be all dirt roads and marsh grass. Really? Mm. My mom hated it here. She took me away to Virginia when I was 10. But I came back when I was 16 and never left. I missed it, you know, I missed the smell of it, working, working on the water. Miss my dad. The quiet. The wind. The wind? You call that wind? The wind in. Chicago in the wintertime. You have to walk with your back to it. It cuts your face. It takes your breath away. <laughs> <laughs> well, we got the oldest oak tree in both Carolinas. Really? You try and top that. She took a look at my plans and never said a word. A week later, she had it on canvas. This was going to be the first. Designing and building my own boats. That was the plan. This was going to be my signature boat, the one we'd never sell. And when will you finish it? I haven't touched it in two years. Someday. Right. Someday. And you'll take me out on that boat? You're on the point where the wind will scare me. <laughs> There'll be no wind tonight. Mm. And you know that? 
I'm the son of a fisherman. No, you watch the Weather Channel. Will you sail with me tonight? I go back in a few days. And I can't change that, because my son's coming home. I just, I don't know if this makes sense. I, maybe... Okay. Well, that's a mistake. Letting her taste your coffee. Well, she liked it last night. She was just being polite. Nobody likes it, take my word. Be good. Oh, Lord. Now what? Go easy. All right, just hold it right there. You stay out of our way. You're not welcome here, Johnny. You better stay out of our way, both of you. Guess the court's turned you down again, huh? It's not your business, Doc. It is settled. Uh, oh, no, we just want the paintings. They were part of our life here, Marta. The only one who sees them is you. People should see them. Please, Garrett. It's all you left us of her. Well, that's the first time you called me her killer, Hank. At least to my face. Nobody killed her, for Christ's sake. He left her alone when she was sick and weak. And she wanted to come home, Doc. This was her home. Now he's killing her mother. I hear her heartbreak every goddamn day. I gave you everything of hers I could. The paintings, Garrett. You got yourself another woman. I know what the hell do you, you care. son of a bitch. Hey, just stay out of this. Step aside. She painted him here. All right, she hung him here. She was the last one to touch him. That's how All it's right. going to stay. All right. All right. This is what you want, isn't it? Well, if I cut it up, you can all have a piece of what you can all have a no, goddamn piece no. of it. Hey, Just hey, set it step down, aside. Dog. Step aside. My God. Is this what she is to you? Something to fight over, pull apart? Look at you. All three of you, blood in your eyes. Is that for Catherine? Or is that so you can walk around and beat your chest like a bunch of goddamn apes? God, God damn it, you're outside of this. Well, I loved her, too. And I want something to remember her by. A piece of this will do it. Marta! Marta! She'd hate this. She'd hate it, Hank. You know Dodge is right. She'd hate this worse than dying. Half the war. You saw them. You heard what they said. Yeah. But you carry your half around pretty good, too.
until you. I didn't even think about being close to anybody else. I just sometimes. I still feel her. She's here. And I don't want to cheat you, Teresa. It was so nice outside, I decided to set the table out there. Is that okay? You said to come in, right? I know. We can eat in the kitchen if you want. Garrett, I don't care. And I got angel food cake, so I hope your dad likes cake. I was going to put that back. But Garrett, I just didn't know where the boundaries were. I didn't know where the boundaries were either. Let me get this. No, I'm sorry. I really... Let me get it. Let me clean it up, OK? I'll get a rag. I'll get it. I can do it. I said I'll get it. Just give me a minute. you wanted? I don't know. I'm Teresa. Dodge. Like the pickup. You said you were pretty. You should have said beautiful. Why didn't he inherit that charm? You had a fight. That's a good sign. I made a mistake. I moved something out of its place. That any mind. He's still not right about it. It's like a truck hit him. 
Swear to God. Clam. Better here than anywhere. Come on inside. It's pretty crowded in there. Wanna take a walk? Okay. He won't tell you much. Man talks about as much as a fish. Anyway, wasn't good right from the beginning. Her family thought that she would be the one to bust out of here and just shake the world. Garrett was too much like them. They thought, anyway, that he would be a an anchor around her, keep her life small. How did she die? Pregnancy just took the stuffing right out of her. Killed over at her parents' house. They kept her there, so Garrett went over and kicked the door down. Carried her out. And she was glad, too. He took care of her the best he could for about a month, I guess. And then, well, she just gave up. Now you know why Garrett don't talk much. The old man never shuts up. <laughs> Can we eat now? Yeah. Uh, you know you ought to knock down some walls. It's getting too crowded in there. Can't afford it. Do the work ourselves. Just end up looking like a boat. Add a deck. Couple of rooms. Why? You think about moving in? <laughs> oh, not in a million years. You'd like that, though, wouldn't you? Keep your eye on me. If he's afraid, I'm going to go back to my old habit. Anybody want any cake? I used to drink like a fish. It ruined my health. No deep, dark secret. Yeah, well, it's no citizen award, either. Two beers a day. That's my limit. Change the subject? Yes. <laughs> The subject is change. People change, even you. That is the subject. Good dinner. You were the best thing about it. You know, if I was about 150 years younger, you'd be in trouble, young lady. Where are you going? Taking my dessert on the beach. Thanks. He likes me. Yeah, well, he's a good man. Mm. He said you were a pain in the ass. <laughs> I'm kidding. That was me. <laughs> well, he's right. You are the best thing about this dinner and this day. This year. Wish it was simpler. Wish it was easier. And I'm sorry. I'm not expecting flowers, but uh, will we call each other? Well, look, I was kind of hoping for flowers. <laughs> <laughs> I could live here. I 
didn't say that to scare you. I scared you, didn't I? <laughs> so will you come and visit me? You mean inland? I don't go inland. <laughs> we have a lake. A big lake. Okay. I'll just go back to my work and my son and they'll just forget about me, right? Every day. I've got your number, sailor. You've got mine, so. No wonder it returns. How are you? Okay. Yeah. So, solve your mystery? There was no mystery. That he lost his wife, Catherine. Um, she was an artist. And uh, dead but not forgotten. Right. So, that's it. End of story. Basically, yeah. There's, there's no story. Kind of, kind of like, was it me that said that? Yeah. So. Okay, Charlie. Toodaloo. On your way. Any regrets? Zip. No. Good. Thank you. So, what was she like? She's beautiful and wispy and um, a great artist. And she's everywhere. She's in his house. She's in the shop. Hmm. The whole town knew her. Was he still in love with her? She isn't gone. Research, Teresa. Hi. It's me. Garrett. I know. Sorry, I've been um, I'm finishing the boat. My boat. I just wanted to tell you. How are you? 
It's been a quiet few weeks. I didn't know uh, what to say. Still don't. Need some help? I'm counting on it. Question. Were we just a casual thing or something else? Possibly a beginning. Just answers, no pressure. Just a playboy, huh? Nailless tourist women. I've only cared about two women in my whole life. Catherine and some city girl, big mouth, pushy. <laughs> Thanks. So you just called telling me about the boat? No. I miss you. I miss all of it. Why don't you come see me, Garrett? It's just a visit. It's not a promise. Is that enough? Listen, you think I'm betting on this, but I'm not. Just as scared as you are. And I miss you, too. Okay, when? When should I come? Yesterday. <laughs> You're not coming by boat, are you? No. Jet ski? Windsurfer? <laughs> Yourself. Got your ticket? Of course I have my ticket. Got my name and all my clothes. And I got a quarter for a phone call. Got a gift for that kid of hers? Get one at the airplane gift shop. Don't get into any fights or anything. There it comes. Right on time, just like your old man. Don't throw your back out. Take your pills. By my count, there should still be two beers left in the fridge when I get back. That's a sorry occupation, counting other people's beers. If you get Kenny or any of these tourist kids to score you beer, I'm going to hear about it. I got two counties covered. The lady sure got you got hooked. How'd you get to be so mean? See you in a week. The hell you say? Not with your plane tickets sitting on the seat here. Good dog. I think he's here, Mom. Okay. Okay. That's the girl. Feel free to take notes. I'm kind of nervous. Really? I look great, though, right? Okay. Okay, is what I meant. Okay. You made it. Jason? Hello. Hi. I think he's disappointed because you don't have a captain's hat on her sea bag. Mom! That's what he was <laughs> expecting, right? Come on in. <laughs> I don't know if it suits a boy your age, but... It's great. Thanks. <laughs> He's into this mayhem thing. I think it's a male deal. Carrot, thank you. She hates chocolates. It's really weird. True. 
Yes, it was very sweet of you. Jason. Excuse me. Thank you. That's what I really wanted. You gotta be beat, no? I hope this is okay. Garrett. This is fine. I mean, this is perfect. Tomorrow night, Jason has a sleepover at a friend's house, so. Meaning what? Shut up. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Garrett, I know this isn't very romantic. What? This is my life. No, this is, no, it's nice. It's nice. I just want you to know me. Just the day-to-day, -day regular me. You think you know me? so far. Teresa. <laughs> I don't even know. I'm glad you're here. I'm glad I'm here too. Jason wanted to surprise you. Hope it's okay. It's fine. Yes. It's only for a minute, then we're gonna hop back on that train. You scared of it, Mom? <laughs> no, I'm, I'm not scared. Of it. <laughs> Hello. Uh, Annie. Garrett. Hi. Hi. This is where I work. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Well, now I can. It was nice meeting you. Now I can picture you on the job. So that's him, that's Ahab, huh? Yeah, that's him. Well, he's not Captain Ahab. Smile at him, be friendly. Friendly people. I know. Go on. Smiling at him, it's so oh, sweet. Oh, behave. You're so negative, Charlie. Don't you want her to be happy? Smell a hat for the rest of her life. I don't know what I was expecting. I didn't realize I. Everybody's close. Well, Teresa, this came as a big surprise to me, but apparently it is the poodle that Lena, is the number one dog. Garrett. Oh, hi, hi. Right. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. <laughs> hi, Lena. Hi, Jason. So Jason is taking hmm? Garrett into town sailing now. Oh, really? So soon? You guys can get lost first. <laughs> well, I know there's a lake around here, son. Yeah, he well, senses that. Sensitive. If you get into any trouble, you know, any trouble at all, certainly give me a, the paper, a call. You want to steer? Sure. You're the captain. You got to keep us going straight, OK? Straight ahead. <laughs> Hi. Hi. How you doing? Good. Hi, Jason. Hi. 
gang. Hi, Lenny. Hi, Mom. Have fun. I'm not used to having you here. No, it's okay, Garrett. It's okay. It's nice uh, being among your things. <laughs> well, is it what you expected? It's comforting. Making me self-conscious. What are you looking at? Teresa in her home. The regular everyday. Teresa. Right. I just wanted to straighten up my room and light a candle and... And I need to take a shower, Garrett.
not gonna believe. <laughs> Garrett. Where did you get this? I found it. What do you mean you found it? I found it on the shore. Garrett, wait. It came to me. You just, you have to trust me. I, I... Trust you? I just had to meet the person that wrote it and I had to meet you. I was gonna tell you before... How could you find me? Because I tracked all of the messages, and there were clues in that I all was. All the messages? They've all been found, and people saw it in the column, and they wrote, I swear to God, I was going to tell you, Garrett. Garrett, wait. I got to get out of here. Garrett! Garrett, wait! Why did you do this? Why? Are you curious? Goddamn no, research. No, because I'm falling in love with you. First in the letters, and then when I met you. And I'm sorry, I was afraid. I was afraid if I told you that I would push you away, just like I'm doing now. Wait. No matter what you think of me, and no matter what happens now, I want you to know how much I care for you. And it shouldn't matter what brought us together, Karen. I sent those letters into the sea to her, not to you, not to all your friends at work. They all knew about me, didn't they? All about Catherine. My life was changed by those three letters. I didn't want it printed in two the letters. paper. You've got to believe I me. I sent two letters to Catherine. What? I have all of the letters. I have all three. Where's the third letter? Is it in that drawer? To all the ships at sea, and all the ports of call, to my family, and to all friends and strangers, this is a message and a prayer. The message is that my travels taught me a great truth. I already had what everyone is searching for and few ever find. The one person in the world who I was born to love forever. A person like me, of the Outer Banks and the Blue Atlantic Mystery. A person rich in simple treasures, self-made, self-taught. A harbor where I am forever home. And no wind or trouble or even a little death can knock down this house. The prayer is that everyone in the world can know this kind of love and be healed by it. If my prayer is heard, then there will be an erasing of all guilt and all regret and an end to all anger. Please, God. She wrote. She never came back from that day. I dried her. I tried to keep her warm. Took her to the hospital. She, she never. She died three days later. I keep thinking if she hadn't gone out that day. Garrett, she knew. Mm. 
she said it. Not even a little death can knock down this house. She knew. Oh, I'm sorry. W would you rather be alone? Has he called? No. I left him a message, though. And, um, I said I was sorry. And I asked him to call. Well, then he will. Lena, do you remember what I was always complaining about? All those times you let me cry on your shoulder about David, remember? <laughs> Honesty, trust. I, I was so scared. I don't, I was falling in love with Garrett and I, Half of my mind was saying, tell him, and the other half was saying, just wait, he's not gonna understand. Wait till the right moment, just wait till you have the right words, you know? And I blew it. I just killed it by being what I hate. I'm a liar. You're not a liar. But to him, I am. And I don't think he's ever going to be able to trust me now. Don't you understand? We all have our own little lies and our little unspoken truths. And you just have to have a little faith that he'll understand that. I don't know. I don't know if he can. I saw his paint. He was holding her letter and he was reading it. And there was just so much pain and he has so much love for her you know I don't know Marta!
sad if I was ever thinking about writing a piece for the paper? No kidding. See in here? No. Other stories. Good stories. It's about time. Well, people get hurt, they shut down. Yeah. Till the pain goes away. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Maybe you just learn to take it in like everything else. Kind of like a few pieces of cork and a great glass of wine. You don't want to miss the wine. Is that, is that in here, the, the cork and the wine thing? No. Good. I hate it. It may be that most of us write our own life story, making it up as we go along. But others seem to have lives that are already shaped and planned, inescapable, perfect as a circle. This is exciting. <laughs> wow, Mom, front page of the section. It's great. Thanks, bud. Can I cut it out? Sure. Thank you. Thank you. Nice, nice. I, I love what you've done here. <laughs> very minimalist. It's very nice of you to stop by. Sir. Yes, well, I come bearing a gift for your new phone booth, office. Can that I hang so it? That's so sweet, yes. Charlie. I know. Oh. <laughs> You'll never guess who it is. <laughs> Uh, 
You seem uh, happiest. Is anything all right? <laughs> yes. Oh, Ahab. Mm. Mm. May I? Well, if you do decide to go off and do something wild and ridiculous, it'll only prove one thing. And what's that? He's one lucky old son of the sea. It's a Charlie Tusky quote. Somebody gonna think you're drying your skivvies up here. Hey, Bert, how are you? <laughs> you look nice. Yeah, well, it hurts. Catherine. Wish to God. Wish to God she was here today. Every day. My dad said you were there. Wish that had known. A surprise, I have no idea. No, it's it's great to see you. I'm glad you came. Me too. I saw the boat. It's beautiful. It's great. I'm happy for you. You want to come inside? Teresa. I'm sorry. I'm, but 
I said must have hurt you. No. No. I just heard what you couldn't tell me. Or maybe what I couldn't hear. And I, I understand now. I think it's so beautiful the way you love her. Teresa. Just know you don't have to say anything. It's what made me want to find you. Then stay with me. Come inside. Just stay as long as you want. Garrett, I thought about it. I thought about a lot of things sitting out here. And I can't stay. Why? As if you can, you'll come to me when it's right. And Garrett, if it's not right, it's okay. Because I wouldn't regret one minute. Not one. Teresa. I don't want to lose you. Then don't. Why do you always sit in the same place? What the hell do you care where I sit? Well, I'm curious. You started sitting here, what, about 10, 11 years ago? Oh, for Christ's sake. You used to sit over there. Like hell. I'm okay. Catch up to her. You let her go. I don't want to talk about it. Listen, I would. Just... No way. Right. She made up her mind. What the hell you want? Persistence. Get crazy, go nuts, a fight for Christ's sake. You spent one afternoon with her. You don't even know who she is. What's it? Chicago. Three minutes, get in the fall. It's your last chance. She wants to try to come between you. I don't have it all figured out, all right? Who the hell does? I think it's easy for me to see another woman in your house. Well, it ain't easy. I'll tell you one thing. I'll give a million bucks to see you grab onto that girl and figure it out as you go along. Just drop it. Drop it? Yeah, drop it. Just... I can't forget about it. Why the hell not? Because you're my boy. It's not your business. What? I said it's not your business. Turn around. Hey! Turn around. Make a fist. Make it! Now you hit me. You hit me in the face, you son of a bitch. Not my business. My son is not my business. What the hell else have I got? It's close to me. Who else ever stuck up for me? You think I don't know your pain? I know it. Some of it I put there. I think I can forget that. She went to New York. You could have gone with her, and here I was, sick, drunk, flat on my ass, bringing you down. Dad. 
Maybe the two of you, maybe it could have been different somehow. Dad! I didn't stay for you. This is who I am. This place, this is where I belong. She came back because she found out she belonged here too. She chose for herself. God, I loved her for that. So did I. Now you choose, choose between yesterday and tomorrow. Pick one, stick with it, and I will shut up and leave you alone. So you'll always know where you are and where home is. You heading for blue water? Yes, sir. Well, you know what you're doing. Got it all figured out.
birthday. And the mayor himself Sorry to interrupt, been... Teresa. There's a phone call for you. Can you take a message? It's urgent. Excuse me. You better take it in my office. Is it Jake's? Hello? Hey, girl. Dodge? I better get this cell while I can still talk. Found it on the boat. It was in his slicker. Dear Catherine. My life began when I found you, and I thought it had ended when I failed to save you. I thought that hanging on to your memory was keeping us both alive. But I was wrong. A woman named Teresa showed me that if I was brave enough to open my heart, I could love again no matter how terrible my grief. She made me realize I was only half alive. It scared me and it hurt. And I didn't know how much I needed her until the night I watched her fly away. When that airplane took off, I felt something inside of me tear away. And I knew I should have stopped her. I should have followed her home. And now tomorrow, I'm going to sail to the Windy Point, and I'm going to say goodbye to you. And then I'm going to go to this woman and see if I can win her heart. <laughs> Stop. 
If I can, I know you'll bless me and bless us all. If I can't, then I'm still blessed because I've had the privilege of loving twice in my life. She gave me that. And if I tell you I love her as much as I loved you, then you'll know the whole story. Rest in peace, my love, Garrett. If some lives form a perfect circle, others take shape in ways we cannot predict or always understand. Loss has been a part of my journey, but it has also shown me what is precious. So has a love for which I can only be grateful.
I found no. 